I'm so excited to have with me here today, Katie Hess. Now I'm reading Katie's book right now, Flower Evolution. It's a book uh, published by Hay House, and it's all about connecting and working with flower elixirs, which are different to essential oils, because each time I talk about flower elixirs or flower essences, people assume that it's essential oils, but it's something completely different. And that's why I was so looking forward to bringing Katie on that so, so we can talk more about it. So let me do a short introduction about Katie. Katie Hess is a flower alchemist, author of Flower Evolution, and founder of Lotus Way, one of the world's leading floral apothecaries. With her signature elixirs featured in O, the Oprah magazine, the New York Times, the New York Times and the LA Times, her flower-powered community is thriving in over 15 countries. Katie's magic has sparked a fire with leading brands, from flower lounges to exclusive scents and products, apothecaries to blending bars. Katie has infused his tr her transformative touch into collaborations with the world's top spas, beauty stores, and more. And without further ado, Katie, welcome to the Lita Lightworker podcast. Thank you so much, George, for having me. It's a super pleasure. It is so great to have you here. And Katie, I, start, I like to start each interview with the hero's journey of the author in, in getting to work with their own healing modality. So what was your journey in discovering the power of flowers and therefore getting to create your first flower elixirs? Yeah, for me, it really all boils down to human potential. I was searching for, you know, what was that thing that could just like catalyze people into freeing themselves up from patterns that hold them back in, and liberating them into the fullest expressions of versions of themselves. Uh, I discovered it soon after I got out of college. I left traveling country outside of the country for a while and ran into an expert with flower essences. Yeah. And I thought, this is it. This is the method of um, how we can use nature to help us peel back the layers and really move into our greatest potential. And could you run us through the, the time you created your first flower elixirs. First of all, yes, run us through that process where you found and you captured the, um, the essence of the flower and what was that experience for you? And then I wanna dig into the specifics of what flower elixirs are. Yes, so first collection. <clears throat> I mean, I wanna say I, I worked with my teacher's flower essences. He's from Spain and I worked with his essences and doing one-on-one -on -one consultations with people like therapy for a good seven years before I made my first flower essence. Mm. So I put in like, you know, tens of thousands of hours to really hone in on my intuition. And one day, one of my friends was like, why don't you make your own flower essences? <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a brilliant idea. Uh, but I think it took, you know, it took so long for me to really, really trust. And so the very, very, very first flower essence I ever made was of an apricot flower. Ah. And the very first collection, because it was the tree right outside of my office, the very first like major flower essence collection trip I went on was to British Columbia in Canada. And that was like a very super special kickoff way to collect flower uh -huh. essences. It was like a full moon, lunar eclipse, um, I was in the like Arctic forest. I didn't like, wasn't familiar with a lot of flowers there. And I was really just like, you know, making wishes, like serious wishes that I could find exactly those flowers that people would most need. And that was a really bizarre and unique trip because mm. the, the animals sort of came out to help. Like I ran into a bear and butterflies and snakes. And in every case, it was the animals that helped me identify which flowers to collect. And then looking back on it now, many, many, many years later, those are precisely the flower essences that people have needed most mm. uh, around the world. So it's kind of amazing when you like make an intention, um, Mother Nature always comes through. <laughs> uh, 
in this group, we believe that um, all the answers we seek are in nature. And that's exactly what you're demonstrating right now. And it's amazing to know that when you set out your intention to find an answer and then you just open up to nature's wisdom, then you're always guided to uh, the right path for you, um, which is amazing. Now, flower elixirs, what are they and how are they different from essential oils? I mean, the primary difference is they don't have a scent. Mm. Traditionally, they're taken internally. So we all know that different flowers make us feel different. Like if you just, you know, visually think, I'm in a field of daisies. It feels totally different than if you think, I'm in a garden of roses or mm. peonies, or I'm in a forest of redwoods. Like each of those feels so different to us innately as humans, and everyone would agree feels so different, right? Uh, so we know that they each emit a quality energy, if you want to be a little more esoteric or scientific or quantum about it. Um, we feel that innately from our own wisdom. And in the past, in many, many cultures around the world, the way that you would take flower essences is by going out into the wild and searching for the dew on top of the flowers and yes. then drinking the dew, right? So luckily, um, that method was scaled in the 30s by Dr. Edward Bach, who mm. lived in your, your neck of the woods. <laughs> um, Indeed. And so, so like when you say like, what are they actually? It is essentially, to use fancy words, solar infusion, which means that you find the flower at its full bloom point and you soak it in water. And then after that, you go through several processes similar to homeopathy, where you end up with this super dilute solution um, that you can take internally or put on your skin that essentially contains the life force of the flower. So even people with allergies can use it because by the time you get down to the final dilution, there's no actual plant parts. It's just mm. like the, the life force or like circling back to what I was saying before, the feeling that you get from that flower is stored in water. The alcohol helps preserve it. And that's what a flower essence is. That is amazing. Now, I have a question, a very technical question, because I've, sure. seen, people, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people, yes, um, collect the, the flowers and then soak it in water and then dilute it several times and then add the alcohol. I mean, I've been taking the, uh, the back remedies for since I was a teenager, like to help me with exams and all that, like to calm down with stress and all that. Now, so this is what's packaged and what's being sold and what you create as well with, with Lotus Way. But can we create our own flower essence without having to dilute it and just using the, the, the infused water? Is that still helpful or do we need to do the dilution process? 100%. Like if you, ha if you have a garden at home or you're spending a lot of time in nature, I mean, especially if you have a garden because you grew those flowers with your own hands, right? Yes. And sometimes you'll even get what we call like volunteer flowers. Like things will pop up on their own accord in your backyard because uh. it's something that you may need. Um, <clears throat> so you can, right at the, the full bloom point, you can either bend the flowers over into water or you can cut them and, and put them in water, soak them in the sunlight for one to three hours. And then... I mean, this is a very common practice done in Central America called spiritual bathing. You can then take that water and dump it over your head. You can put it into a bathtub. You can do it every morning. Uh -huh. You can, I mean, if you have a rose bush, you can just snip off one rose every day. And, and the only thing I would say is because you're not doing dilutions, you'll want to know with 100% certainty if it's a poisonous flower or not. Yeah. If it's poisonous, don't drink it. Uh, and be careful how much you use in a bathtub. Um, if it's for sure safe and not poisonous, you can drink it, you can toss it in your bathtub, you can dump it over your head. <laughs> wow, so right now I have rose geraniums are in full bloom here in my house, my veranda. I have like rose geranium bushes, like beautiful pink flowers and hyacinths as well, which is my favorite flower oh. at the moment. <laughs> so could, could I basically just cut like um, a few flowers tonight and just soak them in water and then tomorrow morning just leave it in the sun and then I have my own flower essences. Yeah, I would actually, I would cut them in the morning ah. and then soak them in the morning and then use them right away. Yeah. I love it. I love how, how practical and easy it can be for people to do that. 
Um, now, obviously, as you just said, each flower has a different essence, a different purpose, a different uh, quality. How do we figure out these qualities and how do we figure out which flower will work for us at each moment in time for different purposes? Okay, so to answer your second question first, how do you figure out what you need? It's very simple because your own innate wisdom will tell you. You can trust your eyes, what they're attracted to. Mm. You can trust your nose, what it's attracted to, even your sense of taste. So for example, if you find yourself in a flower shop and you're looking for flowers, you will always be drawn to the ones that can benefit you the most, always by nature. So you can trust that whatever you're drawn to in your garden, for example, if you feel more drawn towards geranium, or if you feel more drawn towards hyacinth or something else that's in your garden, you can be sure that that's what you need most in that moment. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of figuring out what they're for, it's helpful if you have a regular meditation practice because then you will know what is like your normal baseline uh, awareness state yes. or beingness state. Um, you can ask the plant directly to tell or show or somehow indicate to you. Um, sometimes it comes in a feeling. Sometimes you think you're crazy, like you're just having a thought. Uh, other times you can actually look at how it grows. You know, like the, they have the, um, in the herbalism world, this thing called doctrine of signatures. So if it looks like a heart, it could be good for the heart. Mm. If it looks like kidneys, uh, it could be good for fears because fears are associated with kidneys. Um, so you can simply like look how it grows in nature and see a, a bit of its personality already there. And then you can also just directly ask the plant. You may think that you're crazy, but uh, there is a lot of merit to just saying like, ah, heck, let's just try it. I'll just trust for, you know, if I'm crazy, I'm crazy. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Definitely not crazy for this community. We communicate with flower fairies and the dragons <laughs> and mermaids and no, so they, they're, they're used to it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> so um, I'm curious because for as long as I remember myself taking me as an example, I used to be attracted to tulips and then suddenly I've, I've moved to hyacinths. So I'm curious how and why we move through flowers and does that mean that I, I I, I got what I needed from tulips and then I moved on into something else and therefore I needed a different flower to support me. Do we have flower guardians in some way? Mm, I mean, I would say in terms of guardians, I would say that Mother Nature is always looking out for us mm. and it is the nature of the plant world that it's always of service. And so when you find yourself walking in nature, you can be sure when you come back, you feel better. It's not just the oxygen. It's because the plants are sort of cleaning you of all the mucky muck yes. um, and stress and everything that we carry. So in that way, yes, they're always looking out for us. And uh, if you switch from flower to flower, yeah, it could be that you assimilated the lesson. You learned whatever you needed to learn from the tulip. Uh, or that something else became a higher priority. I tend to think of it as like layers on an onion. So you peel off one layer mm. and there's something else to work on. <laughs> you peel off that layer and there's something under there. And so you're, well, you're naturally looking for the root cause of, of whatever might be uh, holding back from your greatest. Yes, point. makes sense. And are there flowers that we can't use to create flower essences? Or are, they all, are all the flowers, do, do all the flowers have a purpose? And therefore, um, I mean, all flowers have a purpose, but I would say in some circumstances, you would not want to use flowers. One being, if you ask the plant, could I make a flower essence? And it says mm. no, <laughs> for yes. some reason. And you don't have to take it personally. You never know why. Maybe a yeah. dog peed on the flower. You, know? uh, you don't want to make flower essences from flowers where, you know, something maybe like a cemetery or someone has been in trouble or harmed, uh, you know, something bad has taken place. So like those types of places, you would not want to collect flowers. Um, but if there's any doubt, you can just ask permission and, and sort of feel, you know, there have been places where I feel like I'm being watched 
I typically yeah. don't collect flower essences in that kind of place because it's mm. it, not watched by humans, watched by sort of like a, you don't feel right. So I would say in any of those circumstances, you could hold off. Or if you feel really uh, crazy or triggered or grumpy or cranky, you, like oftentimes we say, great days to make flower essences would be full moon and new moon because it amplifies the energy. Yes. Well, it also amplifies our energy and some days we may not feel good. So don't make a flower essence on a day that you're really grumpy. <laughs> I love it. So basically rule of thumb, if it feels good and you feel good, then go for it. If not, then not, not, not the best idea. <laughs> and that's if you're making flower essences for other people. If you're just going in your garden and maybe you're having a crappy day, Absolutely. Grab the flower and make an essence and go for it. Just bathe yourself in the water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Katie, what are the uses of flower elixirs or flower essences, however you want to call it? I'm reading your book right now and I'm surprised to find out the variety of uses they have. Could you run us through the main ones that people can use? So just to make sure I fully understand your question, do you mm. mean like, why are people taking them? Yes. So to sleep better at night, to mm. quiet their minds, to calm their nerves, to attract love, to work through old patterns from mom and dad or, you know, abandonment from when they were a child or not enough attention or too much attention or any of the childhood things. Uh, to have more clarity, more focus, to help you get things done when you don't feel like it, to dissolve overwhelm, to create more compatibility in relationships. I could go on all day. Yeah, oh <laughs> my God. you could imagine in your entire brain that you could come up with, there's a flower for it. Oh my God, I love it. And uh, to come up to an earlier point that you said with, um, with choosing flowers, I remember going to your website um, the other day and I'm like, you have pictures of flowers and then you ask which flower are you most drawn to? And then I was attracted to, let me just see. Okay. Yes. The top, so the bottom right one. I remember, I don't remember the name right now, but then I went into the description and I realized, Oh my God, that's exactly me. <laughs> so just <laughs> it feels so good. Like everybody watching live right now or listening to the podcast or watching the replay on YouTube, just go to uh, lotusway.com and then see which flower you're attracted to and see, um, and see what message it has for you. Okay, so let me move on to a different question. Okay. What are some easy ways and different ways we can use flower elixirs for? Yes, you can consume them, we can take them on the skin. Are there any other ways we can use them? You can bathe with them. You can give them to your pets mm. and your children. Uh, mm -hmm. You can put them in drinks. You can put them in food. You can put them in salad dressing, in your tea, in any beverage. You typically won't want to cook them. Yes. You can always add them afterwards. Uh, you can put them in popsicles in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. You can give them to your plants. To make your plants happy. Um. Hmm. I mean, pretty much to like celebrate, like to celebrate, maybe you have a business meeting and you want to like uh, ease the tension from people that you're just meeting. You can put it in the tea. There's so many different ways. So many different ways. It's like, it's like everything, like you, you can use them basically for practically everything and for anyone. They're just so safe to use, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's summer's coming. If you, see like your partner or somebody working outside and they're really hot you can um, like wet a paper towel or a cloth yeah. and then add flower essences and wrap it around their neck kind of a nice refreshing like you can you know use the towel to wash your face um any excuse to use them refresh <laughs> energy. and for how long do people need to take them and in what frequency yeah. to see results yeah great question so uh I recommend that you take flower essences five times a day. Hmm. You, you can experience benefits with less, uh, but I tend to recommend five times because then if you shoot for five and you get a little less, you're always going to get a benefit. Yeah. 
um, because we live really busy lives and people forget. Um, you can take them more often than that. If you're having a really stressful day, you can take them every five minutes. Uh, mm. so in the past, I've had to do like speaking engagements with in front of a thousand people and I've been so nervous, I'm shaking. Mm. I'll just like take it every minute before I get on stage. Uh, to see like a dramatic shift. So like you will feel a difference in three to five days if you're using it with that level of frequency. I tend to think of 21 days as a really nice time for like a habit or pattern to shift or change. Mm -hmm. So you may need something different in 21 days. That being said, everyone's different. Um, you can pay attention to how you feel. If you feel drawn to something else after a week, you may need something else. But I recommend sort of like sticking to one thing for 21 days just to sort of see the full expression of what happens. And to add that, I would say if it's your first time taking flower essences, you will notice that in the beginning, it just sort of takes the edge off of life. You just sort of in general feel better. After a few months, the flower essences kind of start working deeper because it's almost like you get to a point of stability where things aren't stressing you out as much. And then the flowers go deeper and they show you things about yourself. Like, oh gosh, I'm really impatient. <laughs> or <laughs> things that you may not have seen before. And so I recommend like, you know, try flower essences for like six months. Yes, you can use different ones, like maybe a different one each month for six months. What I notice is that after like four to six months, your inner landscape has changed so much that you start to see the external world reflecting things back to you. Like mm. different people show up in your lives, different opportunities, maybe a different job. Things in the outer world start shifting around to reflect and match the resonance of what's happening on the inside. It's like therapy, therefore. So what are, what are some of the practices, like complementary practices that people can use while going through, uh, let's say, for example, a flower essence therapy, like of like two or three months to mm. deal with what's coming up anything from massage and body work to tr i love traditional chinese medicine ayurvedic mm. medicine anything with herbs and the botanical world uh natural remedies of course you can also uh, combine flower essences with any pharmaceuticals that is okay mm. uh, but any sort of natural therapies um detox baths or um you know eating clean diet or maybe laying off white sugar or you know less alcohol any of those um you know either lifestyle choices or um, maybe like an exercise routine yoga tai chi meditation all of those things anything that will you know help you feel more clear and more aware uh is of great benefit because then you can really start to sense and feel on a more subtle level what's happening with the flower essences. Mm. Are there any, do different qualities of flower produce more, more potent flower essences? Let's say for example, um, greenhouse flowers to natural or wild flowers. I notice, Katie, that when I collect flowers from out in, out in nature like wild flowers and I bring them into my office, the energy is much higher than when I buy flowers from a flower shop. Does that have any effect to the flower essence? Absolutely. So if you make flower essences, you wanna make them from flowers that are growing in the ground. Hmm. Cut flowers, mm, they won't have the same, like you said, like energy or juice. Yeah. Uh, you want them to be in the, in, the, in the earth when you collect them. Um, so they have the highest quantity of energy um, so that for sure. And then in terms of potency, uh, it's hard to say, like, I would say for people who are new to flower essences, I wouldn't start with orchids because orchids can be kind of too much, can be mm. kind of intense, um, or like bring up stuff very quickly, mm. like deep, deep, deep stuff. So maybe be taking flower essences for several months before you start, before you move into the orchids. Um, but not necessarily because they're stronger than other flowers. It's just, or more potent. It's just simply that they're like digging around in different yeah. parts of yourself. <laughs> and in your website, you have blends of different flowers essences. What is the significance of taking a blend rather than a specific flowers essence? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So we, you, we usually recommend that people just starting flower essences start with the combinations because it's sort of like um, something is coming at you from many directions. So if you can't sleep, for example, there's a flower for muscular tension, or maybe you're thinking too much. So there's a flower to quiet the mind. Or maybe you're not able to let things go at work, so it helps you let go. So that you know, so that you can feel a difference right away. Versus taking a single flower is more subtle. You don't feel it as quickly, but it goes deeper, and you can mm. target more specific issues. So I usually recommend starting with a blend and then moving on to single flowers after that. Hmm. And finally, my other question has to do with. What about flowers we don't like or we don't feel an attraction oh, towards? I'm what so does that mean for that. us? Yes, yes. Like the shadow side awesome. of flowers. Yes, <laughs> I'm so happy you brought that question up because that's been coming up a lot. If you just like have a huge aversion or you're like, I hate the way that flower looks, <laughs> that will be one of the most quintessential powerful flowers for you in uh, terms of shifting your life. So we, we have a flower card deck with 54 different flowers and we lay them all out and it's beautiful. We'll ask people, choose the three you're most attracted to. But if you see one that you're just like, oh, I just hate it. Uh, you need that one too. <laughs> I've had people tell me like, I hate this flower so much. Right? And you think, wow, so much emotion about a flower. <laughs> and if they actually use that flower essence, they'll call you like two weeks later and say, whoa that completely changed my life interesting i'm trying <laughs> to think of like are there any flowers i hate i don't really hate but i dislike orchids since you mentioned them <laughs> like my dad has like 10 of them i'm like i don't want to see them <laughs> they're so high maintenance they want to be watered a special way and they don't like soil and they like bark and i'm like what's your problem just take the normal wood <laughs> okay i guess i have to do some meditation after after that to figure out why <laughs> <laughs> Katie, where can people find more information about you and about the flower essences? Yes, yeah, so you can find us on our website, Lotus Way, and it's Lotus Like the Flower and then wei.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we just opened up a new building in Phoenix, Arizona, in the States. Uh, we have another website called San, S A N, San Center Phoenix, where we incorporate flower essences with traditional Chinese medicine and botanical therapies. Mm. You're all welcome to come and visit us in Phoenix, Arizona, anytime you get some time to travel. Um, and it's been a real joy. Thank you so much, George. Katie, thank you so much. I really enjoyed our conversation. I wanted to uh, interview you for a few months now, and I'm so excited to have gotten the opportunity to do so. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with flowers with us. And I'm so excited for everybody to experience what you create at Lotus Way. Thank you so much and wishing you the most beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you.